This is Robert Trysdale. We're live here, Team Bushido again. Professor Robert Drysdale's in town. You're not. We're not live, actually. But we're here live. Real talk. We're live. Um, with Robert Drysdale, he's back in Ottawa, the nation's capital. Um, welcome back. Yes, great to be back. Uh, can we just recap maybe what's been going on lately, your Pan Am camp that you had at your school and how they did? Well, uh, yeah, we, we, we've been having these camps for a while and uh, every time more people come over and uh, it's, it's pretty intense training. It's trying to get guys uh, mentally, physically uh, ready for the tournament. So there's a lot of strategy going on. Uh, you know, a lot of it's not so much as in, hey, we're going to learn 50 new moves. It's about we're going to sharpen what we know and we're going to understand the rules and we're going to have our minds ready for this. So this year we did something different. We had a, a, a rule seminar. We had a, a sports psychology seminar, which is something that very few people pay any attention to. But I think it's very important, especially for people that aren't very experienced. If you have 50, 100 competitions on your back, you probably don't need it. But for people to just start competing, it's a big deal. It's a big plus. And uh, so it was fun. You know, we had a lot of people coming from all over the world. Uh, Australia, Europe, Canada, Brazil. So it was, it was a lot of fun. And uh, we did all right, man. I think that overall, the, the overall results were, were really good. We had a total of 47 competitors. So it was a pretty big team, you know, bigger than, the, 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 than last year for sure. And uh, I think we had a total of like 15 medals, which is for international competition is good. You know, of course, I would have liked to... I think we lost too many finals, but, you know, just the fact that some of my guys have been training for a little over a year, they made it to the final in an international competition, that's a big deal, you know. So I was proud of them, and I think that overall the team did really well. But uh, we just got to keep working, you know. I think there's still things that we need to improve on, and uh, every time we go to these competitions, we see things that we, ha we have to work on. We see flaws, we see holes in our game, and that's, that's what competition's about. It actually forces you to raise the bar. Nice. And uh, I guess next up for the plate is the Worlds. Is there another training camp coming up? Yeah, we're, we plan on putting another camp together for the Worlds in uh, very much the same format. Uh, of course, I plan on correcting some of the mistakes we made. And uh, just improving, man, always improving, always getting better. Uh, there's a World Jiu-Jitsu Expo coming up during the same time. Uh, anything going on there for you? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I, I know the organizers well. and. I think it was one of the, I was one of the first guys he presented the idea to, and I thought, man, you, you pushed this, man. This is going to work. This got potential, and it's it's something that if you don't do it, it's like a year or two down the road, someone else is going to do it, and uh, yeah, you definitely got to go through with it. And uh, so far, it's it's everything's on schedule, you know. So I'm excited. I think it'll be a lot of fun, and I think it would be huge for the sport. Speaking of that, huge matchup announced. We got uh, Nick Diaz versus Berlio Estima. Who do you call? Berlio. Brawley. I, mean, I think Nick is good, but I, mean, I don't think it would be like Brawley trying to fight Nick in MMA. You know, it would, you don't want to. I mean, it would be highly unlikely for Brawley to win. I mean, it's highly unlikely that Nick would beat Brawley in a jiu-jitsu match. It's. I mean, anything could happen, but um, I'd, I'd call it Brawley by triangle. By triangle, nice. And uh, any, uh, let's talk about your MMA career for a second. Uh, let the people know at home what's going on right now. Uh, it's it's been a very <laughs> a very slow career, really, but. Uh, I, you know, I, I had I had an injury that refused to heal, and you know it's it's been a while now, and I I don't wanna I don't wanna walk in there half prepared, so I had to push my May fight. I was fighting in May, I pushed it to July, and uh, that's the plan now. Fighting July, legacy fighting in uh, Houston, Texas, and uh, I'm excited about it. I train hard. I take every fight very seriously, but I'm the kind of guy I don't I don't like to walk in there 70 percent. You know, I think I think it, I think my career very seriously, and I, that to me it's just not one of those things. Oh, I just want to fight. It's not like that. You know, I want to win. That's the difference. Nice, and uh, good luck with that fight, by the way. Uh, since the last time we spoke, actually, you've relocated. Do uh, you want to speak about that a bit? Yeah, we, uh, uh, we have a bigger location now. If you're familiar with Vegas, it's uh, on Rainbow and Sahara, uh, 7,000 square feet. It's, we have two big mat areas, a little conditioning area, uh, like the ice bath now. we got showers, two big changing rooms. So it's, you know, it, was, uh, uh, it was a big step for us, but uh, you know, so far, so good. We're excited, and uh, the plan is to double our membership within the next year or so. And you know, we, we we're making progress. You know, it's it's still it's still early uh, 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 within the move. Like we've been there for like four or five months now, but it, it, so far the, the 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 feedback has been very positive, and everyone seems to be very happy. And it's a happy environment. If you've been to the gym before, you know it's a pretty chilled environment. We're not very political when it comes to jujitsu. Uh, it's a it's not a, a, a 
you know, and there's no, there are no rivalries in there. Everyone's just happy, and it's, it feels like home. You know, that's the one thing that I think distinguishes my gym from other places. Like when you walk in, there's like everyone in there is your brother. You know, everyone, everyone gets along. There's no such thing as like I don't even, I don't know that guy's name. Everyone knows each other by name. So that's that's one thing that I, I like about the, that place. You know, we have a very good crew, and uh, it's that's rare. You don't always have that. You always have, you can always have good jujitsu, but you don't always have a good crew. And uh, I noticed a change in my game since I added uh, sports and conditioning, strength and conditioning. Uh, have uh, you added that into your regimen? I always have. You know, it's something I hate. I think everyone hates. You're not supposed to like conditioning. If you like conditioning, you're not going hard enough. That's my, that's my take on it. But it's so important. It's, you know, I think it's, it's to some extent it's neglected in jiu-jitsu. Uh, you know, it goes back to that thing, like, oh, jiu-jitsu is pure technique. And, you know, small little guy always beats the big guy. And uh, I, I think that's... I mean, I think that's a good sales pitch, but it's just delusional. It's just not realistic. You know, jiu-jitsu is no, it's no different from uh, athletics or from swimming or from wrestling or any other sport where physical ability is extremely important. So being a good athlete helps, but working to improve your ath athletic abilities is very important. And uh, we see this at the Worlds. You know, if you watch the Worlds 10, 15 years ago, what you see is, uh, you know, you don't, you don't see you don't see super athletes in there. They're good at jujitsu, but you don't see super athletes. And you, you watch it today, and they're all built like little powerhouses. You know, they're all shredded, and so you, what, what you see is an improvement, not just in technique, but in athleticism as well. It was a huge, that, was a, that was a big difference between jujitsu in the 1980s, 90s, and and today. So uh, you know, that's 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 one thing that I think it's very important. A lot of people neglect. Once again, because there's like all technique, technique, and technique is always going to be the most important thing. But I think I don't think that being fast is bad. I don't think that being flexible is bad. You know, I, go ahead. Okay, I was going to say, uh, who takes care of your sports and conditioning? Uh, I work with Jeremy over in Vegas, he's a student of mine. Uh, I've worked with a number of people in the past, and uh, like I don't, I, I'm not always uh, doing like what you know what people refer to as conditioning. I'm normally just lifting, you know, heavy weights, and then uh, when it's closer to a fight, like maybe I'm, you know six weeks out I start changing the program a little bit so now I'm not I'm less focused on strength I'm more concerned with speed and endurance so I don't want to be able I want to be able to lift not just eight reps or ten reps I'm trying to lift I'm trying to fight five minutes straight so the the, 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 the mindset changes a little bit that's kind of how, how we focus our conditioning nice. and the last question so I get you to training uh, the art of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu versus the sport now. I just want your take on it. Have we lost that, that actual, what Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu was all about? I, I, I mean, what does that mean, Jiu-Jitsu is all about? Like, that's, that's like, that's, it's all subjective, you know? Like, it depends on what you're looking for. Uh, I think that Jiu-Jitsu, when I started training, like, when you said Jiu-Jitsu and Vale Tudo or MMA was the same thing. It wasn't like, there wasn't a clear distinction there. Of course, today there is. You know, what, you, what I see is jiu-jitsu got a lot more, a lot better. It evolved as a sport tremendously. It's far more technical, but it has gone in a direction that's not, it's less self-defense. It's less MMA-like. It's more sport-like. It's kind of like what happened to judo. It became less and less of a, of a fighting art. It became more of a sport, which is good. It's good in a way. It hurts the sport in another way, but it just depends on what you're looking for. I have guys that come to my gym and they, they want to do bearing bolo in 50 50. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, I'm, we're going to teach them that. That's what you want to do. That's if your sport competition is your thing, that's what guys in your weight class will be doing. So that's what you have to learn. And I have guys that walk in there and like, hey man, just teach me how to get out of a triangle and stand back up. And that's jujitsu. Mm -hmm. Getting out of a triangle and standing up from guard is, is jujitsu. Using the fence to stand back up, that's jujitsu. So I, you know, I, we teach that as well. So it kind of depends on what your approach is. Uh, I think that sport jujitsu really has gone, is going in a different direction. Uh, some people criticize that, but that's, I mean, what do you expect? You know, it's, it's the, 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 the sports evolution is guided by the, the, the rules in the sport. And the rules are telling you to do this. Guys are going to do what they got to do to win. So if the sport goes in a different direction, that's not, I mean, who's to blame? No one really. Just the, the, way the, I mean, the rules, if anything. Uh, but what are you going to do? You're going to allow punches and elbows in a jiu-jitsu match? I mean, that's just the way it is, and that's to be expected. Wrestling is far away from MMA, too, so is boxing. Great, right. great. And uh, last words with Robert Drysdale. Uh, BJJ addict all day. Uh, I'm going to shout out to my affiliate in uh, Ottawa, Team Bushido. And uh, hello to all my, all my friends out there. And uh, train hard, guys. Train hard.